In part 2 of this series, the classic 2010 season finally arrives, with plenty of drivers and teams looking for success. Drivers like Vettel, Alonso, Hamilton and Schumacher, and teams like Ferrari, Red Bull and McLaren. But how did it start off for these teams and drivers? Let's now find out. Let's first get into the driver changes. The biggest one was double world champion Fernando Alonso going to Ferrari. It was rumoured to be happening for a long time but finally it did happen. And at the time they were expected to be a formidable force. The world champion though Jensen Button would join McLaren. In a shocking move away from the team he won his title with. The Hamilton and Button dynamic was going to be certainly interesting. But also in 2010 we had the return of statistically the greatest driver of all time. Michael Schumacher who would be driving for Mercedes who finally returned as a constructor after taking over the Braun team that won the championship the year before and leaving Williams to join Schumacher would be Nico Rosberg in what was a strong driver lineup. Other moves included Robert Kubica going to Renault and also former Braun driver Rubens Barrichello going to Williams. Now with the regulations, there was now only one difference between 2009 and 2010 and that was the ban of refuelling. Meaning that 2010 would be the first season since 1993 without refuelling. And it would definitely have an effect on the racing. The reason refuelling was banned though was because 1 it cost a lot of money and 2 it was very dangerous. And because racing needed to be more financially viable it had to go. But the stage was now set for 2010. Could anyone take away Jensen Button's crown? Or would he reign supreme this time at McLaren? Well in the first qualifying session of the season in Bahrain he was not reigning supreme at all. As he only qualified in P8. A terrible first outing for Jensen. It wasn't that much better though for returnee Michael Schumacher who qualified in 7th as he was still getting to grips and learning his Mercedes car. After looking strong in pre-season testing, Ferrari also in Bahrain looked very strong, as Felipe Massa qualified in second with Fernando Alonso in P3. One man though put in a stellar performance to beat them both. That man was Sebastian Vettel, who was looking rather impressive in the Red Bull. And at the start of the first race in 2010, he led the pack away. From Alonso now second and Felipe Massa in third. Lewis Hamilton's start though was not good at all. As at the start he was very aggressive in trying to pass Felipe Massa and actually lost position to Nico Rosberg. And was now being held up behind the Silver Arrow car. Eventually though he would find his way past. Despite Vettel comfortably leading in the Red Bull the two Ferraris were still looking good. With them Linus Stern in second and third. But then after dominantly leading most of the race, Sebastian Vettel now had a reliability issue. And it was slowing him down massively compared to the two Ferrari drivers. Who both went on to pass him and make it a Ferrari 1-2. Lewis Hamilton would also get past to put himself on the podium. Vettel though would crawl home in P4. But winning the first race of 2010 and his first race for Ferrari would be the Spaniard Fernando Alonso. He may not have deserved to win but at the end of the day a win is a win. As his teammate Felipe Massa came home in second for a Ferrari 1-2. Their first 1-2 since 2008. Lewis Hamilton would finish in third with Sebastian Vettel in fourth and Nico Rosberg in fifth. Michael Schumacher returned to F1 with a 6th place finish with Jensen Button in P7 and Mark Webber in P8 with Liuzzi in 9th and Barrichello in 10th. Schumacher, Button and Webber especially had a lot of work to do to get to the top of the field. But after this race the talk was not about the Ferrari 1-2. It was about just how boring this race was. And because this was the first race since the 1993 Australian Grand Prix without refuelling people now started to criticise the new F1. But two weeks later they would be all proven wrong. As we arrived in Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. There were though a couple of issues coming into this Grand Prix. First off it now became apparent that Virgin Racing did not have a big enough fuel tank to complete the races. 
and they announced they would not have a big enough fuel tank until the Spanish Grand Prix. And also McLaren had to make some alterations to their diffusers after clarification from the FIA. They were though innovating in the early part of 2010 with their F-duct, as already now by Race 2 Sauber had copied their design. And the F-duct during 2010 would play a massive role. But at the colder than usual Grand Prix in Melbourne qualifying came around. First off in Q1, Vitaly Petrov in the Renault was knocked out as he continued to disappoint and was way off the pace of his teammate Robert Kubica. The biggest shock though was Lewis Hamilton being knocked out in Q2 as he struggled for grip and finished only in P11. His teammate and world champion Jensen Button though was doing a lot better than he was in Bahrain as he put the McLaren up in P4 doing well to split the Ferraris of Alonso and Massa. The home favourite though Mark Webber had his best ever qualifying in this home race by qualifying in P2. But in the battle for pole position, his teammate Sebastian Vettel got the better of him. And again, just like in Bahrain, he maintained his lead going into Turn 1. But we had a big incident at Turn 1 between Jensen Button, Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso as Button spun Alonso around and Alonso went into Schumacher, causing Schumacher's front wing to now scrape along the ground. Schumacher was forced to pit whilst Fernando Alonso had been forced to the back of the grid, as Jensen Button only lost a couple of places. But after the safety car came out in Australia because of a massive crash with Kamui Kobayashi, Jensen Button made an inspired decision to go from intermediate tyres to dry tyres as the track at the start of the race was not dry but it was only slightly damp and Jensen thought it was worth the gamble. So pitted for dry tyres but then went off at turn 3 and it looked as though that gamble was not going to pay off. But after setting a couple of very fast sector times all the drivers then piled into the pit lane and it paid off for Jensen as he was now in third. But then passed Robert Kubitz of a second and was now closing on Sebastian Vettel. So in hindsight, it turned out to be a great move by the world champion. Also having a great race was Robert Kubica, who made his way through the chaos at the start and eventually found his way in second before he was passed by Button, but was then promoted to second after Sebastian Vettel had another reliability problem. What an unlucky start to 2010 for Sebastian. Quietly though, in this race, Ferrari were actually making progress. As Felipe Massa now found his way up in third with Fernando Alonso close behind in fourth. As Fernando put in a great drive from the very back. They would though be under massive pressure from both Lewis Hamilton and Mark Webber. And so would Robert Kubica. As Lewis Hamilton had made an extra pit stop and was on much fresher tyres. As the people in second, third, fourth and fifth were on very old and worn tyres. And as Hamilton caught those drivers and was starting to pass, it looked as though he was going to get a podium. But then towards the end of the Grand Prix, Mark Webber took him out. As Hamilton would finish in sixth with Mark Webber a very poor P9. But winning the Australian Grand Prix for the second year in a row would be Jensen Button. As he put in a stellar performance to get his first win for McLaren. Robert Kubica finished in a brilliant second with Massa in third, Alonso fourth and Nico Rosberg again in P5. Hamilton was a disappointed sixth with Liuzzi in seventh, Barrichello eighth, Weber ninth and Michael Schumacher in P10. Schumacher also did well to recover after the front wing damage he had. But after these two races we still didn't really know what was going to happen. We knew who was looking fast such as Red Bull and Ferrari and we knew which teams had to work on their pace such as McLaren and Mercedes. But already again after two races, 2010 was proving to be very unpredictable. But would this type of unpredictability continue? Make sure to find out in part 3. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back next on Wednesday with a video on Charles Leclerc. As well, don't forget to join our Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of the first two races of 2010. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.